Good morning, final years. Welcome to a new academic year. I, I would say I'm happy to see you, but um, where I think you're seeing me more than I'm seeing you, I wish that we had a different situation where I would have been able to see all of you and welcome you back to the faculty. But um, that has its challenges with regards to COVID-19. We are awaiting a few more persons to start. Our numbers are a little low. We're gonna give um, another five minutes for people to join us. And um, as such, we will start at 9.35. So just bear with us a little bit. We don't want any of our um, final years to, um, to miss any of what we have to talk about this morning. So see you all at 9.35. Thank you.
Ready? Good morning again, and welcome to our finalizing students orientation. We are pleased that you are back and I hope that you are rearing to go and that you have all your cylinders locked and ready to take on this um, academic year. Proverbially, you are on your last lap. So we need you to have everything in place. And as a result, we're gonna have a, a short presentation with Dr. Frederick Boyd today. He is the undergraduate coordinator in the Department of Life Sciences. And he's going to talk to you this morning about several things that relate to you and your completion of um, for your degree. Now, there are a few matters that I just want to mention. We were supposed to be talking a little bit this morning on careers, but what we're going to do is set aside that conversation for a whole session just to discuss um, careers. We will send out a link um, for you to be able to indicate to us what careers you're interested in hearing about so that we can have a proper slate of persons to talk about your careers and graduate school and so on. And so we want this session to be mainly about you wrapping up. We want this to be mainly about your academic advising and um, perchance if some of you need it, which I'm sure you will, um, your credit checks. We have a degree plan that we created earlier in the year and we now have it on the faculty website. So we want you to go onto the faculty website at some point during the course of the morning and complete that degree plan. In order for you to complete that degree plan, we need for you to put in the level one courses at level one, the level two courses at level two, and the level three courses at level three in the slots provided. Do not put in courses that you have failed. We just want to see what you have passed and what you are aiming to do so we can give you an evaluation as to where you are and if you are up to the mark with all of your credits. But you will hear some more about that in the discussion with, um, with Dr. Boyd. Another thing I would like to um, mention is that once you hear the conversation with Dr. Boyd, you will the presentation from Dr. Boyd, you will understand um, some of what I'm telling you. There are some special considerations that we make for our final year students. Um, we can provide you with a, a credit override if you need a one credit or a two credit because maybe um, one of your finalizing courses is um, has taken you beyond the 18 credits. So let, let's talk about that a little bit more once Dr. Boyd is finished. I will post um, a Zoom link for you to be able to have a conversation with me right after we're finished, just before you go to your academic counseling with your individual departments. Um, last but not least, we have, well, actually I have two things. Um, we have library tours online, of course, at 12, and a link would have been sent out to you last evening. And you might be wondering, why would I need a library tour? I've been here, this is my third year or fourth for some of you. But we have um, some new offerings from the library because we are now in an online sort of an environment. And so the library has some offerings and some um, but some things that are particular to that kind of um, learning environment. And so they have tours today and a talk to apprise you of this information to get you cracking because some of you will need library resources and you'll need more online resources, particularly because you are far away and the library is attempting to facilitate all of this. So please join the library tours. It's at 12 o'clock. Follow the link that you've been sent in your email. Um, if you haven't registered yet, then that link, I will try to post it um, in the chat so that you will have it. Um, in terms of waivers, some people have written to me requesting waivers. These waivers have been sent to RIS for upload. You need to give us a few days. Um, RIS is swamped right now, but um, I'm sure they will get through um, with everything for you to be able to start with your courses. Um, please ensure that you go to your departmental sessions. Please fill out the degree plan. The degree plan and the new um, handbook, the 2020-2021 handbook, is available on the faculty website, along with links that we've used this week for videos from the respective departments about majors and minors. I know you are far beyond this kind of discussion, but if you think you need a refresher, 
those are some um, videos that you can look at. So you can go to the FST webpage, which is a, a tremendous resource of information. Well, enough from me. I am going to now turn you over to Dr. Frederick Boyd. He is going to talk to you for a little while on just all the things you might need to consider while you wrap up and stroll on towards completion of your degree. Have a very good morning. Welcome, Thank Dr. Thank you, Dr. Sh James Williamson. Morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, final session of uh, counseling for those who are finalizing and those who may be in the penultimate year as well. Um, I trust that we will take very seriously a lot of the things that Dr. Williamson, uh, James Williamson said to us a while ago, and please maximize your opportunities, a library tour that's coming up later on, etc. We're going to be looking at a few matters that relate particularly to returning students and finalizing students as we look through this PowerPoint presentation. Next slide, please. Yes. So we're going to look at these uh, matters credit checks, majors, foundation courses, uh, where you ought to be now in both level two and level three options. When you happen to fail a course, if you happen to fail a course, we look at the go through remark process to make sure that you understand everything about that. We look at supplemental oral exams, warning required to withdraw. We trust that none of you will be in this category, but we need to cover it in case you fall on hard times. Uh, the Dean's List and Commendation for those who do very well, the whole matter of the GPA, summer school, study skills workshops, projects and internships, and we end with the FST experience. Now, this is geared, as we said before, for students who are in their second and third years of study, okay? At this point in the second semester, especially if you are in your graduating year, it is recommended that you do a credit check. You do not want to come up to graduation like the month before graduation or so and find out that you're three credits short. So you need to do a credit check. Currently, we do this process manually, but they are working on a, an automated self-use system, okay? So you can attend the faculty office any day and request a credit check. Undergraduate coordinators also can do that, facilitate that for you, okay? Um, there are two sets of requirements for graduation. One, requirements for the major, and two, faculty requirements. So your faculty requirements will be you, what is required for your major plus the other things that are required. Next slide, please. So doing a credit check, in order to graduate, you must, you must at least do a major from a department within the faculty. The major should be declared in year two. So if you are, if you are in year three and you haven't declared the major yet, you know you need to do that from yesterday. All right. So as soon as possible, please go on and do that. <clears throat> now, you may have had the selection of a major. The major probably was approved and you declared your minor. And either because the minor was not approved by the relevant department or some other reason, um, your major, your choice for major was scrubbed from your record. So you need to check that that your major is still there because um, we need to see your major and your minor, okay? But at least your major. Doing another major is not recommended. You won't have enough time in this if you want to finish your degree in three years in order to do two majors, okay? You may pursue a minor alongside your major, and this minor can be in FST. So for example, if you're majoring in chemistry and minoring in computer science, okay? That's within the faculty or you may do it in another faculty. So for example, you might be doing animal biology major and you combine that with a psychology minor, or you may mix and match courses. What's important is you must have a major, okay? When you have a major, then you can mix and match courses or you can have a minor along with the major. The mechanism for declaring or requesting a change of major or minor is on the SAS page, request a change of major or enrollment status. That's the link for um, declaring your major or ensuring that your major is intact there, your choice. All right, next slide. 
advice is to be sought regarding whether you are progressing correctly towards your major and or minor. Please ensure you should have the information of what is required for your major. Just don't just go and do courses ad hoc like that because you like this or you like that. You need to ensure that before you do something that you like or so it's in your major, okay? So make sure the priority is covering um, the subjects that are listed in your major, all right? And you can seek confirmation from the faculty office or from undergraduate uh, coordinators in the departments, okay? These, program these programs usually specify all the required courses, that's the majors. So for actuarial science, environmental biology, or occupational health, safety and health. Um, environmental biology, for example, lists the four level one biology courses you need to do in order to do the major, and then the second year and third year courses, as well as electives. Majors will necessarily have less credits than the requirement for the BSc degree. So ensure that the appropriate electives have been completed or are being uh, attempted and where specific courses are not available then the appropriate substitution is made available okay now well, let me just say something about that so if you're doing the major and there's a particular course that's not being offered in the, in your year this year for example then you need to consult with undergraduate coordinators in the respective department or the relevant department to ensure that you can substitute another course and the other course that you want to substitute is allowed okay so for example in life sciences if you're if you want if you if a, a button course is not um, offered you need to substitute that with another bot on course not with a zool or biol course okay but departments will guide you on that process next Majors and minors, you need only register for a major. Minors are not compulsory, as we said before. You can have your major and then mix and match courses um, in order to make up your credits for your degree. Um, you can request one or two minors, okay? You can request one or two minors, either from FST or another faculty or both. Where a major and a minor are from the same department, the required advanced courses for both may overlap. Now, if this is the case, you're doing a major and a minor within the same department. You need to ensure that you're not trying to count a particular course twice. So if you're doing a particular course for your major, it cannot be counted for your minor, okay? So again, you'll have to find substitute courses as advised by the department concerned, which will satisfy the requirement for your minor, okay? If you have to, re to replace that. Okay, of course you don't have that problem if you're majoring in one department and minoring in another department. Next, next slide. Level one, a student is required to have passed a minimum of 24 level one credits before graduation. Most courses are now prerequisite driven. Okay, now at least 18 of these credits must be from within FST. Now, a number of students strive for 24 level one credits. That's the minimum, remember that, okay? The maximum that's allowable normally for each year is 36 credits, okay? So you actually can maximize your credits and take 36, okay? And later on we'll say why it is advisable to maximize your credits, okay? So 24 minimum level one credits will qualify you to go on to level two, and at least 18 of these must be from within our faculty. Six can be from another faculty. Advanced level courses, minimum of 60 advanced credits, okay? Um, note that all majors in FST require less than 60 credits, as we said before, okay? Um, <clears throat> of course, it goes out saying that you will be required to pass courses outside of those necessary for your major. This does not apply if you're registered for a BSc program where all the courses are specified. Next slide, please. Foundation courses. In order to, get, to graduate in FST, this is a faculty requirement now. You need passes in three foundation courses or their equivalent. 
I know the handbook used to say, I think it used to say that you need to have nine credits of foundation courses, but it's more accurate to say that you need to have three foundation courses. And that's because um, you, you see the foundation courses, they're found 10, 14, or found 19, 10, 19, then found 1101, and followed by found 1301. Now, if you do found uh, 1019, that's a six credit foundation course, you still need to do another two, right? So that's if you happen to have to do 1019, found 1019, then you are going to end up with 12 foundation credits rather than nine, okay? But if you do 1014, uh, 1101 and 1301, then you will end up with nine um, nine foundation credits. Now, found 1014 and found 1019 cannot be replaced. Next slide. Cannot be replaced by any other course, okay? So the, the, the other two can be replaced by a modern language, okay? Now, you can't replace Phone 1014 or 1019 with a modern language course. These are writing courses and you cannot replace a writing courses. Writing courses are so important because we find that students need to be initiated into the, the whole process of scientific writing. Not, 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 not this and the other thingy, but you need to do um, proper scientific writing, okay? If you have passed Cape Spanish at school, then you can take Spanish at the next level at UWI uh, to replace um, the foundation, the non-writing foundation courses. Modern language department will assist you in choosing the appropriate course. Next slide. The modern languages which are allowed are Spanish, French, Portuguese, Chinese, Japanese, unfortunately, Caribbean Sign Language, Ling 1819, is not regarded as a substitute for the non-writing courses. Next slide, please. So French, students without CSEC take basic French or beginner's French. Students with CSEC, beginner's French 2, that's intermediate. And students with CAPE take French language 1A. Those with Spanish, sorry, without Spanish at CSEC do basic or beginner's Spanish. Those with CSEC do intermediate Spanish. And of course, those with CAPE will do a more advanced Spanish course, SPAN 1001. Next slide, please. Portuguese, Chinese, and Japanese are all available to, to students. And because these are generally not taught in the high schools, in the secondary schools, it's all beginners, in beginners level in these languages, okay? Next slide. Now, a word again, as I began to say before about phone 1014 and 1019, both these courses deal with writing specifically for science students. So do not underestimate the importance of these courses because we still have students at level three who cannot write scientifically, that is, all right? It is better to take them at the beginning of your academic career as you can benefit from the writing skills from very early on, okay? So you would have been expected to take phone 1014 or 1019, depending on which one you qualify for, in the second semester of year one. Phone 1014 is a three credit course, usually taken in the second semester, but Phone 1019 is a six credit course which runs over two semesters. Therefore, it has to be started in the first semester. Next slide. Now, which one you take depends on the level of pass in Cape Communication Studies and or CSEC, uh, sorry, and or the English Language Proficiency Test, ELPT. Okay, I think um, the next sitting is on September 11th or something like that, but you need to confirm that. Generally, grade one in CXE, CSEC is required for Fountain 14. Either one of these is a prerequisite for some advanced level courses like Chem 2010 and Chem 2011. If you do not take a foundation course in year one, you will have more credits to take in later years. It will back up on you, or you may have to do summer school to do that, but this is not advisable, okay? So if 
if you happen to have made a mistake of not taking either of these in your first year, make sure you hope and do them now. All right, all right, next slide. Where you ought to be in terms of credits in semester two. Level two, you should have passed at least 12 or 15 for computing, level one credits, which are prerequisites for your major, all right? And that's in the particular subject, all right? You should have all 24 credits minimum, okay? With a minimum of 18 from F FST. You should have passed at least one foundation course, 1014 or 1019, perhaps with a second foundation course or modern language substitute um, in this year too. You should have passed between 15 to 18 advanced credits, including at least some toward your major. For part-time registrations, this number should be between three and 12. Let me just um, reiterate here again that whatever uh, registration you're on, whether full-time or part-time, you need to ensure that you're maximizing your credits. Okay, so for full-time students, you can take up to 36 credits per year, 18 um, in the first semester, 18 in the second semester, plus your 21 credits, sorry, plus your three credits, sorry, uh, foundation in your second year. So 18 and 18, and then three foundation credits in your second semester. Okay, that's the normal situation. If you are registered full-time and you are doing just uh, 24 credits or whatever, you are actually wasting your money, okay? You're paying the same for 24 credits as you are for 36 credits for the year. So maximize. When it comes down to part-time, 12. So if you're doing less than 12, you're actually wasting your money. You need to maximize your credits at the particular registration level. Thank you. Next slide. Level three, you should have passed the 12 or 15 as a case of computer level one credits, which are prerequisites for your major and all other level one credits. You should have passed at least two foundation courses now, either 1014 or 1019, uh, with either found 1101 or 1301 or a modern language substitute for one of these. Remember, you can't substitute for writing courses. With full-time registration, ideally you should have passed between 45 and 54 advanced credits, and part-time between nine and 36. Next slide, please. Now, these levels are not binding. They're intended to give you an idea of where exactly you should be at this stage. Progr progress is possible with a lesser number of courses or and or different combinations. Preferably, you should have declared your major and minors by the end of semester one in level two. And as far as possible, these should have been approved by the appropriate departments. Please check to see that they are approved. Next slide. The normal semester credit limits, as we were saying before, full-time semester one, 18 credits. Semester two, 21 credits because it's 18 FST credits plus your three foundation credits. Uh, Part-time students, Semesters one and two, 12 credits, all right? It is possible to exceed these limits with a faculty credit override from the associate dean. So there might be a reason why you need to do 21 credits in level one. You will have to get an override from the faculty office, okay? And if they can see why you need it and that you are able to handle it, they will gladly give you that override, okay? Remember your department undergrad coordinators can't give you an override for credits. It, that's a faculty uh, matter. Uh, department undergraduate coordinators can give you overrides as far as prerequisites or, or, or something like that is concerned, okay? You must request this online and advise the faculty personnel at the front desk. You need to justify why you need it, okay? And um, an extension of the credit limit for full-time students is rarely given in semester two unless the student is graduating that semester. Next slide. Now, we are hopeful that you did pass everything at the last sitting, but maybe you didn't pass all the courses which you registered for. And this is a, a kind of a setback, but it's not a disaster. Please don't panic. If you fail a course, particularly one that is a requirement for your major or you need for graduation, you have options, which come up in the next slide. Retake the course at the next opportunity a supplementary oral exam. 
So you can do that um, in lieu of the failure of the course, okay? Um, go through and or remark of failing examination paper. And four, to some extent, your options are guided by how badly you fail the course. So you can retake the course, you can do a supplementary oral exam, or you can do the go through and a remark if that is indicated. Next slide. Retaking the course this is your only option if you require the course for your major and you failed the coursework, especially coursework. Okay, if you fail the theory very badly as well, you may need to retake the course. FST generally requires a pass in the final examination and a pass in coursework. And we cannot uh, stress this enough. It's too many times we get questions from students in advanced level. Sir, I got 55, um, 55 on the mark sheet, final, final grade, but I've still failed the course. That's because you failed the theory exam, and you may have passed the coursework well enough, and when you pass the coursework well enough, that averaged with your failure to give you 55, but you haven't passed yet. So your pass must be in the theory exam and the coursework, okay? Now, if you fail the coursework, you have to do the course over again, okay? So a pass is normally defined as 50% or more. If your overall pass mark is more than 45%, you are, and you have passed the coursework, you have 40% or above in the, final, in the final grade, then you may be eligible for a supplementary oral, okay? Sometimes departments will offer you the oral. Um, sometimes you can request it and we'll see how that goes. If these criteria do not apply, then you will likely have to reset the course. If you pass the coursework, you should be able to carry that to your next attempt and only retake the final exam, MEX or MLX. MEX is a registration where you are redoing the theory exam for the course, not the entire course. MLX is where you're doing um, some other requirements in the course, like tutorials, etc., but not labs. Next uh, slide. Some first semester courses are offered in MEX in the second semester. That's a common situation in, in some of our first year courses, level one courses. You will require departmental approval of your MEX registration. Some courses are offered MEX in the summer school only, okay? And that in some departments applies to year two and year three courses. You will require departmental approval from your undergrad coordinator for that registration. Some first semester courses can only be taken in the first semester of the following academic year. You can register MEX, but you will require departmental approval. In some cases, the department will require you to register MLX because of the level of performance rather than um, MEX, okay? As I said before, MLX means that you take some in-course assessments, which are apart from the labs. Only lab, only lab um, uh, exemption for MLX, okay? But for um, MEX, you have exemption from tutorials, assignments, etc. You only do the theory reset. Next slide, please. If you fail the coursework and, uh, sorry, if you fail a course and fail the coursework, you will possibly have to take the entire course over again, but it's better discuss your options with the department. Next slide. If you think you failed unfairly or there was a mistake somewhere, you can request a go through if you failed, okay? Or, and or a remark through the examination section. You apply online at the examination section on online at their page. There is no cost for a go through. Okay, so the go through is just that. You go through the paper with the lecturer or lecturers at a specific, specified time to see where you lost marks or where you, get, you went wrong. This is something that we suggest that you do whether you're looking for a remark or not. A go through is basic because you need to see where you went wrong. There are cases where we have had students repeating a course more than once because they didn't check to see where they were going wrong. You apply for a remark from exams up to two days after you ever had the go through. If between your lecturer and yourself, you believe that there is scope for increased marks, okay, a mistake was found or there's a dispute, you can um, apply for a remark through exams, okay? This means that your paper will then be marked by another lecturer 
in another independent examiner and the remark attracts a cost. Next slide. So the go through would indicate whether you have grounds for requesting a remark. There is a 2000 Jamaican dollar fee for the remark. This is refundable if your mark is increased. But if, you, if your mark remains the same or happens to decrease, then that fee is not refundable. Go-throughs or remarks can only be requested if you fail. So if you think that you should have gotten an A+, plus, but you see B-, minus, okay, um, go-throughs are not for you, okay? The period of application for these is... Um, so in summer, for some, sorry, the period of application for semester two and summer school of the previous year, 2019-20, is the 7th to the 14th of September during this month, okay? So that you have to do quickly. Next slide, please. In certain circumstances, the department concerned will request from the faculty permission to offer a student a supplementary oral, okay? And... Criteria remain the same, a pass in the final exam, pass in the coursework. Pass is normally defined as more than 50%, okay? So sometimes the department can request a supplementary oral for you. Next slide, especially if you're graduating. Next slide. The fail course must be required by the student either to progress in the program and or be a requirement for graduation. Normally, a student is limited to gaining a maximum of eight credits through supplementary orals. That's usually about two oral, two orals through your course of study. Now, that's a time when you need to graduate and you, you need an oral in a, 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 a subject. So you may need a third oral. Sometimes the department will ask the faculty to waive the requirement and allow you to do a third oral, okay? But there have been cases where students have failed the exam in their final year. They did an oral and they failed the oral and they're asking to do another oral. No, you'd never get back-to-back -back orals, okay? You can have two, normally two orals, not at the same time for the same subject, okay? So please remember that as you go along. Next slide, please. A supplementary oral may be requested where a student requires only one course to complete all the requirements for graduation, or the student has already used credits approaching the eight credit limit, such that they could not grant, be granted a third oral under the existing regulations. The student satisfies the aforementioned criteria with regard to the failed course in which a third supplementary oral would be offered. So you're normally allowed two orals throughout your BSc experience, but you can be granted a third if we are trying to help you to graduate. Next question, next slide, please. The idea of a supplementary oral, if awarded, is to allow the student to show that they can perform better than they did in the final exam that they had failed, okay? Departments conduct oral exams in slightly different ways. If the student passes the supplementary oral, the grade for the course changes from a failure to 50%, and the grade is CO, meaning that you have completed an oral. If you fail the oral, it's an FO, okay? And this is um, only fair to the other students who didn't get a second chance at the particular course, okay? So you're only given a 50% overall um, if you pass by a supplementary oral, okay? If you do MEX or you do it for the first time, you can get up to your A+, plus, okay? But if you're doing an oral in the subject, you only can get 50% you've just passed. Okay, next slide. You can still register for courses in semester two if you fail all, all, hopefully not, or many of your courses in semester one. You could retake the exams in the courses which you failed in semester one in summer school to catch up. Failing a course will affect your GPA, however, okay? And you're expected to maintain a GPA of more than two, preferably two or more. And um, just to say that many of you coming in from level one would have realized that we do not start GPA calculations in level one because we allow you to catch your footing, et cetera, and to see where you really want to go in terms of specializations, in terms of your major. But from level two onwards, it's GPA time. So every time you take a course, that will affect your GPA. 
all right? Or if you don't turn up to do the course, it can affect your GPA. Next question, next slide, please. You will automatically be placed on warning at the end of semester one if your GPA is less than two, okay? So two is the minimum GPA required to continue to progress, but don't aim for two, please. This is an indication that you need to improve your performance in the second semester and raise this semester GPA above two. If your semester GPA is less than two in semester two, as well as in semester one, you will be given a letter where you are required to withdraw from the faculty. Next slide. Now, if you are required to withdraw from the faculty, it's not a death sentence, okay? It's, it's not a prison sentence either, okay? It's just a pause in your academic career. If you're placed on required to withdraw and wish to continue at UA, then you have three options. One, you can be granted a waiver on the requirement if you can show why you perform poorly in the semester exam and that you can show that you have taken measures to ameliorate the causes of your failure, okay? So something happened um, to affect your performance in semester two. You need to show that um, if you are allowed to continue that you have sorted out that situation. You can transfer to another faculty who would not want to see you go, but you have that option, okay? And thirdly, you have an option to sit out for one year and then reply, reapply in order to continue or alter your program. Sometimes persons need to just take a break to reevaluate and um, refresh and come again. So that's, that's option number three. Next slide. When you return, if you are put on withdrawal, required to withdraw. When you return, you're required to attend a study skills workshop, which is organized in the faculty office. So the faculty office organizes study skills workshops. Secondly, you need to be judicious about selecting your courses, okay, for your major and your degree, okay? Outside of your major, you may consider selecting some out-of-faculty courses or doing an out-of-faculty minor. Seek academic advice frequently from the faculty office or from undergraduate coordinators or from a lecturer as required. Become part of a study group and improve your study habits, okay? Next slide. Commendations, Dean List, Departmental Deprises. Ah. Departmental prizes. A commendation is awarded in either semester one or two when a student records a semester GPA in excess of 3.6, equal to 3.6 or more in that semester, with no grade lower than a B plus. A student is placed on the dean list when he or she gains a commendation in semesters one and two within the same academic year. We reward um, people who work hard. Okay, so that's something to work towards. Most departments offer departmental awards or prizes for performances, particularly in, in, in particular courses or in a suite of courses. These have specific criteria and the details are available from the respective departmental websites. Next slide, please. Implications of a low GPA, the main one concerns funding. Many scholarships, student loan, funding agencies withdraw funding if you have a GPA less than two. Passing or failing advanced level courses affects your degree GPA and the class of your G uh, that you will be awarded. Note that the impact of just a few F grades, especially that F3 in advanced courses will significantly lower the degree GPA and it's often difficult to recover from this. Okay, next slide. GPN class of degree, you'll see it outlined for you here. First class honors, 3.6 or greater. That's why you get commendation if you have a semester GPA of 3.6 or greater. Okay, you're on your way to a first class honors if you keep that up. Upper second class honors between 3 and 3.59. Lower second class honors, 2.5 to 2.99, and a pass uh, degree is from GPA 2, which is the minimum, to 
in a little while we'll see how the, the GPA is calculated. GPA is calculated based on all the advanced courses which you reg have registered for, whether you have passed or failed them. All right, next slide. That's the GPA calculation, okay? Determined by the total number of grade points or quality points earned for the number of credits registered. Okay, only advanced courses are included in calculating this. So you see outlined there, the courses, their credits, okay? The quality points that they attract with the grade that you get. So your performance determines how many points you get, okay? We multiply the number of credits by your performance to get the total quality points for each subject. We add those up and we get a cumulative total of your quality points. And then we divide that by the total number of credits that you have taken, and that gives us the GPA, okay? So you see why it's very important to perform well, okay? Especially seeing here how much this contributes, okay? Um, a satisfactory C performance only gives you, you see the difference? All right, next slide, please. Summer school is conducted within the June to July period each year. It is optional, but you have to pay separately for any courses which you take. It can be used to take entire courses or to reset exams. So you can register for some courses M11 if they are offered in the summer, okay? But um, many times you'll find that courses are set as reset, MEX, for courses which you have passed the coursework but failed the exam. Okay, registration is limited to 12 credits in total for summer school, but in the event that you need to do more credits, you can apply for a credit override from the faculty office, again, just like in the semester. Next slide. Registration opens for summer school soon after semester two is finished. You register online the same way on SAS that you registered for courses during the semester. Examinations are held towards the end of July, early August, and results are normally released before the beginning of semester one of the academic year. Next slide, please. Study skills workshops, I mentioned that earlier. The FST typically hosts a series of workshops for students wishing to improve their study skills and techniques throughout the year. This is mandatory for those who have returned from um, required to withdraw, or even for those who are not required to withdraw but have been placed on warning. But you do not have to be in any of these categories to qualify for the study skills workshop. You may just want to improve your quality of revision and study techniques, you would attend these. The date for the ones for this semester is to be announced and more information will be available from the faculty office on this. Next slide. Scholarships, awards, student exchange programs. Departmental web pages will give information as well as the Office of Student Financing for available scholarships. Scholarships primarily target the second and third year students and the deadline for application is usually May 31st of the previous year. So make, su make sure that May 31st doesn't pass you this year to um, apply for your scholarship award etc. for next year. Some departments have student exchange programs where you actually go abroad to do a part of a course. Um, and that is an, an interesting and exciting opportunity that is open to you as well. Next slide. Research projects. Departments in FST offer research projects. These are usually undertaken by a student in their final year, final year or final semester, okay? The student undertakes a specific piece of research work which is then written up as a thesis, as an undergraduate thesis, which is examined by at least two examiners. So you have your experimental work to do, okay? Then you have your um, results and discussion. You put that in a document and you submit that, okay? Your le the lecturers assigned will um, grade the document. Then you have a, an oral presentation and you will be graded on your oral presentation. The point of your oral presentation is to ensure that you understood what you're doing and you just didn't carry out instructions from the lecturer. 
Okay, this is a good experience if you are interested in pursuing a research degree at postgraduate level. So if you want to go on to the research, a uh, research project is good for you. Initially, you need to approach a potential supervisor and discuss a potential project with him or her. The project might be your idea, but the project may be the um, idea of the lecturer and just looking for somebody to do that work with. Projects are worth three, four, or six credits, depending on the department, and usually are undertaken in the student's final year, as we said before. Now, a project that's worth three credits um, has lower requirements than a project for six credits. Okay, so you need to ensure that you get the advice that you need for this. Next slide. In turn, internships, another opportunity, non-taught um, course offered by departments. So internships and projects are non-taught courses. You are supervised, okay? Internships are offered by some departments. They normally run during the summer period. They involve placement of a student with a company or institution which is involved in a specific area of specialization. There are good opportunities for students to acquire work experience in the particular area that they're studying and may offer potential employment after graduation. Students have actually been taken on after graduation in some of these workplaces. So it's a good thing to do an internship. Students are allocated to a particular company or institution and work there over a number of weeks, for example, six weeks. The student is usually required to produce a report, just like in the project, and as well as a presentation on what they did. The student's performance is assessed by their employer, that's an external supervisor, and their examiners, um, the lecturers who will listen to their project, their internship presentation and mark their, their internship report, okay? So you have an external and an internal component for the internships, okay? The projects are strictly internal. Next. Now, just before we do this, just remember that in some majors, you are, you are required to have a project or an internship. Some majors will allow you to have a project and an internship. So if you're going to do both, you need to plan your time carefully, okay? Lastly, but definitely not least, is the person, personnel who you can consult when you have problems. Our undergraduate associate dean, Top of the line is Dr. Shereen James Williamson. She deals with undergraduate matters in the faculty and her email is there for you. Dr. Win Winklet Gallimore from chemistry um, is in charge of student experience. Undergraduate coordinators from the various departments are as follows, Dr. Ruby Lindo and, and or Dr. Isolin Amar Kuhn, biochemistry section. Doctors Nadale uh, Downer Riley, Dr. Michael Coley in chemistry. Dr. Daniel Focum is so well accomplished that he alone <laughs> is your undergraduate coordinator in the Department of Computing. Drs. Michael Byrne and Dr. Stemmon, uh, Department of Geography and Geology. Drs. Gail Weber and Frederick Boyd, yours truly, in the Department of Life Sciences. Dr. Sam McDaniel, Howard and Dr. Howard Hines in the Department of Mathematics and Dr. Louis Ray Harris in the Department of Physics. Those are the point people for advice in your undergraduate career, okay? Please ensure that you access advice. Next slide. I think that we may be done, right? All right. Thank you very much, and we continue to wish you all the best as you progress through your first degree. And remember, we are here to help you, all right? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Oboid. Thank you very, very much. I, I've been getting questions on the, on the YouTube chat, but my goodness, I'm not able to to respond to all of them. It doesn't work like normal social media, so you have to be trying to spell all the names and so on. But um, for those of you who are still tuned in, please, 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 I'm going to um, send you a, a Zoom link so that you can join me so that we can have a conversation shortly. Um, we have coming up your... Um, 
your, your departmental discussions for academic counseling. And what we will need is for you to go to the link that has been provided for you, for your department. I will ask that we remain live for a few minutes so that um, you can get the, the Zoom link. I'm gonna post that now. Hang on, I'm trying to get that onto our YouTube. And um, if if our team in the background can leave this link up so that our students can um, can access it. Otherwise, um, if they if we come offline, you need to just hold on maybe about three to five minutes and the link will repopulate. Okay. I am still trying to answer questions. So I we can in fact keep the link up a little bit longer until the um until the youtube link is is ready the zoom link is ready the plans for the rest of the day you have your academic advising now um the second thing is that you have um the library tour at talk and tour at 12. i've put the link in the um I put a link in the YouTube chat. I put it very early so you would get it. And uh, I think now we're gonna have a, a one minute or two minute hello from our Guild Council. They have been behind the scenes working with us to um, stream all of this orientation this week. They have been awesome. And awesome is expected because they are members of the Faculty of Greatness. So I'm going to invite Daniel Nicole who is part of the PR team. She will come in and give you a quick talk and then I will wrap up and we will move on to our additional um, activities for the day. Daniel. Hi guys, hi. Thank you, Dr. Williamson. Let me just, all right. Um, so I'd like to thank you guys for watching our lovely orientation session today as Dr. Williams has stated, I am Daniel Nicole, the PRO for the FSDU committee. You may see me looking off screen because I'm doing tech support while I'm um, doing this presentation. So as we've mentioned in our previous sessions, this is the Faculty of Greatness. It is going to be a great year. We expect a lot from you and in the same breath, we know you expect a lot from us. So what we want you to do, we want you to keep up with us on social media, keep checking your emails for stuff from admin. And that just we just want to ensure that there's seamless communication. So um my phone is slipping. So today you heard about the academic side of UE and we want you to join us later at 5 p.m. on this channel for our very own presentation. It's a panel discussion, it's called UE, the home away from home, and we'll be showing you how to um make the most of the other side of you, the extracurricular stuff, the holistic development and so on. Thank you guys for um tuning in. Um Yes, again, I can't stress it enough. This is the Faculty of Greatness. Ensure that you subscribe to our channel and you follow us on all socials at FSD underscore UE Mona. Thank you, guys. Um, back to you, Dr. Williamson. Thanks, Daniel. I am I am experiencing some hiccup with the um with the Zoom link. Is there any way we can send this link out um, after we are finished, or will you can you put up the a running of the 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 guild um, video while we try to figure it out, so I can post it before people disappear. All right.
Uh, hello again, students. All right, so I have put some links in the chat and I am about to start the Zoom conversation. So if you switch over to Zoom, I will have um, links there for you in the chat um, if you haven't found them already. So have a good morning and thank you very much for joining us. This has been um, very, very useful. I hope that it will help you to guide yourself through to the, um, the finish line. Have a good day.